Hey everybody, this is, uh, welcome back to my series on how to make a full suit. Um, this video we're going to be doing the arms and the torso. Um, this is going to be a longer video just because uh, it's really involved. I had a couple people ask me how did I keep my duct tape dummy so fluffy. Um, I basically stuffed it with whatever I had around and I made sure that it was um, actually bigger than I am myself. Um, a lot of people underestimate how big they need to make our, their fursuits. Fursuits normally aren't going to be skin tight. They're going to be baggy. Um, if you want a skin tight fursuit then you're probably going to need to use some sort of uh, stretchy material in between the seams because um, the kind of fur that people normally use isn't, the backing does not stretch. Uh, so you'll want to avoid using just this kind of fur for a skin tight suit. So what I'm starting out doing right here um, is the same thing that I did with my digigrade legs and, um, and my feet. Uh, so what you do is you take your fur and you pin it onto your duct tape dummy, uh, making sure to leave extra floppy room on the arms in order to uh, be able to breathe while you're in your suit. Um, so I pin it in place and then I cut it out approximately where I want it to be. And I actually, um, even though I didn't do it in this video, I had to add a second ring of white at the top of my arms because the duct tape dummy arms I didn't account for the fact that they uh, they sort of shrivel in a way so they're not going to be as long as your actual arms are so when I um, made the end of that of the first brown ring at the wrist uh, flush to the uh, to the end of the arm of the duct tape dummy, it was a bad decision because it wasn't big enough. So you're going to do the ladder stitch on your arms and uh, that'll complete that. Moving on to the torso, what I've done, and you can barely see it, I took a blue marker and I uh, wrote onto my duct tape dummy the pattern that I wanted. Now, at this point I am actually like 90% out of my fur. So, I um, am using scraps and the last of what I have in order to make this work. Once again, um, I'm pinning over the pattern of the heart that's going to be in the middle, and it came out a little bit crooked, but I kind of like it, so I left it. Pinning everything into place. Um, what I did was I have two halves of my torso. I don't do a whole bunch of different pieces and everything. Um, I pin it uh, at the front and the back and I cut out the neckline later. You'll see that later. Um, just because the less seams that you have, the stronger your fursuit is going to be. Because seams are not going to be as strong as the backing itself. So here I am pinning the uh, front half of the, or I'm sorry, the back half of the the torso on and cutting out with the X-Acto knife the half piece. And the two seams down the side, um, I actually did not, I, I, you need to add shoulder bits to start your arm sleeves off. It'll cover the beginning of your arm sleeves, which covers most of the white on my arm sleeves. Um, but you'll need to add that so that you can have um, a nice seamless flow in between your um, torso and... Oh goodness, what am I doing there? That is disgusting looking. Anyway, between uh, your torso and your arms. So now I have pulled the pattern out and I'm pinning it into place. I originally was going to just make this into a pocket. So I did a little bit of fiddling that I went back and forth with. Um, in the video and I need to, I'll eventually pull it off and make that heart into one whole piece. So right now doing the ladder stitch, sorry for the crappy canyon, every single time that I do the sewing it's just like, I'm not going to be on the camera, Bleh. because logic. 
do. So um, right now I'm doing a ladder stitch. I think I will do a tutorial on how to do a ladder stitch later. Um, something about the ladder stitch that I didn't really understand. Um, I, when I first began, I did the ladder stitch and then I just sewed all the way up and then I did not. I didn't take the end of the string and run it through in between the stitches. That's something that's really important to do because it'll keep it from getting caught on things and tugging on it. Now, when I make my fur seats, I always put them on after they're all done to make sure that all of my seams flow nicely. So that none of them get tugged or ripped when I put it on. I actually, when I attached the back of, I only attached the back a uh, half of my torso to my digigrade legs because the legs need to be held up by something. I don't like wearing suspenders. I think it gives it a more mashed up look, but it's also tough because people who are shaped like me don't easily fit into fursuits. And I like mine to be a little bit form fitting. They're not super baggy. And so every time I try to pull it up over my butt, it just doesn't work. So be really careful that when you use the ladder stitch, um, you're making your stitches in a very, very even way because if you don't, it'll pull, it'll bunch the fabric and make your seams a lot tighter than they have to be. Um, and tighter doesn't necessarily mean more sturdy. Uh, in this case, it just means that it's going to constrict you more than um, it needs to. And I didn't sew all the way down to the bottom for the reason that when I like when I wear my fursuits to be able to. Um, bend over, bend forward, bend backwards, move around a whole lot, and have a lot of dexterity in my entire body. So there are two slits at the bottom of this that I used to help me indicate where I was going to stop sewing on my digigrid legs when I attached the torso to there. So basically more sewing that you can't see. Good job Catherine, proud of you. My next suit that I'll be working on, the Lion Shark uh, Voodoo, he will be. I'll be sure to be better about this. I've got a whole mirror set up and everything for that case. This is actually going to be the last video in my series. Um, I'm narrating this right now without having the final clip in here. That's going to be. Interesting. Oh well. So, um, sew up the sides first, and then do the tops of the shoulders, and then you'll cut out the neckline after all of that is done. Because obviously you can't put your head through there, it'd be completely uncomfortable. But, uh... So right now I'm taking the um, pins out of the little heart and deciding how the hell I'm going to do this. So I start with the bottom and um, it's going to be a little bit tough to get this off of your duct tape dummy. Gotta be honest with you. So you can actually see my hands there doing the ladder stitch around the um, heart. But I ended up pulling it and redoing it because um, the heart ended up making the suit too bunched for my liking and it was crooked. So I was not having any part of that. Something really important, um, I know a lot of people don't have those wire dog brushes um, readily available to them, but when you make your seams with a ladder stitch, um, it is the strongest and best seam for you to use, but what it does is it pulls the fur surrounding it into the edges, and unless you want to look like a teddy bear, 
um, definitely invest two or three bucks into a wire brush and then brush down your seams really, really well because if you don't brush down your seams super well then um, you'll just have this big ugly seam. Oh look, I'm trying to call my boyfriend. Why am I doing that on video? You know the weirdest thing about this video? Nah, I don't need to say that. Never mind. A lot has changed since uh since I started Juju Bug. A lot. Meh. So I am sewing right now and figuring out how to do this hard right now, but you can just see this. Which is awkward. I'm so sorry. So, because you can't see it, I'm just going to tell you what I'm doing. I'm cutting out the pattern of the heart on the torso and then sewing the brown onto the white. Because you can't see it. Now I'm, I'm, I'm brushing everything. Very important. See my crooked ass heart? Alright, so, onto the zipper! You need a couple of things that you have needed throughout this entire series. Scissors. Needle. Z not a zipper, but zipper. And thread. You need these things for your video. For your dirt. For your derp. So, I've turned my fursuit inside out, and what I'm doing is I am cutting the place where my zipper is going to be. Now, it's a little bit more expensive, but definitely invest in a metal zipper, because the plastic I'm sorry, I'm cutting it down to the proper length, um, in order to make it fit my fursuit. Now, because I have finally added the neck floof onto Jujubug's head, the hood, so to speak, um it's going to cover the top of my uh, the top of my zipper and right now I'm, I'm reading up on how to make an invisible zipper I'm sorry don't judge me I had to remember so this is gonna sound really weird um, the part of the zipper that doesn't have teeth on it is going to point outwards um, on your fursuit it's going to point away from like the edge of your fur so, see where I'm touching right now? I am, um, yeah, see like that. So the teeth part is going to be on top of the fur and not sticking out over the lip of the fur, if that makes sense to you. And you're going to try and sew as close to the teeth without overlapping them. Definitely very important. Um, without overlapping them as you can all the way up. And you can do this with a ladder stitch, you can do this like I'm doing it just back and forth with really small stitches. You want your zipper to be very tightly sewn because if it's loose, you're going to have gaps in your fursuit that people can see into, which is going to make it look like a lower quality fursuit. Now I debuted Jujubug at a helicopter landing party um, before she was finished, and you can see my ice packs underneath her. That's what I wear underneath my fursuit to um, keep me cool because I don't have the money for a cool. I mean, I do, I just don't want to spend it. No. I don't have the money for a cooling vest, so what I do is I take three or four of um, flat ice packs and I put them in a gallon size baggie. Um, with paper towels wrapped around the ice packs to help control the uh, condensation. And then I just put that in front of my fursuit. I tuck it into the lip of my shorts that I wear underneath my fursuit. And that's all that I do for cooling. I don't have a computer fan in her head. I don't have a cooling suit or anything. Nothing super fancy. However, a side note, if you watch my head video, you'll have noticed that um, the balaclava on the inside of her head is only hot glued on. So what I did was the I took the material and I made a slit in it. 
so a slit big enough that I can fit an ice pack in. So I have an ice pack directly on the top of my head, the part, the hottest part of your head. Um, and it's kind of a donut shaped gel ice pack that I just slide in there and, or I can put it on the back of my neck, um, with safety pins or maybe buttons someday if I decide to do that. Um, and on the fur to help keep it closed. Basically, I can line my entire fursuit head with ice packs that I can remove and use again. Um, so I wish that I had gotten a video of that. I'm going to do the same thing. There's so many things I'm going to be doing in my next series when I'm doing Voodoo um, and Hocus and Pocus. But don't tell anybody about those. Shh. Um, so many more things that I'm doing. Um, I'm going to line my next fursuit. Like, you can see that this fursuit is not lined. If you want to line your fursuit, like would be a mascot, um, and not have the backing touching your skin, what you're going to do is you're going to do this entire process exactly the same, but you're going to do it with, um, like, sweat wick material or something. And then on the edges of everything, you'll curl it over and then use a sewing machine to seal it all. So, yeah. I'm going to keep talking even though my video technically ends here because I'm going to have a video of me wearing Jujubug here. Um, so dancing Jujubug probably, I'm not sure I'm not dancing right now or narrating me. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. This project has been a really big thing for me. I've gotten wonderful feedback. Don't forget, um, I'm going to be doing a Razor Nabu X giveaway later. Um, and if you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask in the comments below because uh, as a few of you have noticed, I will reply to you as best that I can. I'll do an FAQ video, maybe if things keep go going the way they're going. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much. You all have a great day. Bye!